Hi everybody, my name is Bryn Williams and I am a professional actor. You may have seen me last year in the first national tour of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory or on Broadway in the original casts of SpongeBob SquarePants, 13 the Musical, or Bye Bye Birdie. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to self-tape your own audition. But don't worry, don't freak out. It is way easier than you think it is, and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. Before we go any further, I wanna introduce you to some people. These are really good friends of mine, all of whom are professional working actors in TV, film, and theater. They'll be popping in and out with their own real life self tapes that have actually been submitted for projects. Who better to use as an example, right? One of the first questions I always get about self taping is, what kind of camera should I use? Well, I'm gonna let you in on a not so secret industry secret. Television, film, and musical theater actors have been self-taping auditions for years, and the majority of those auditions are done on cell phones. The camera quality is great, and as long as casting can see you clearly and the shot isn't really shaky, they really don't care what kind of camera it's on. For example, I'm filming this on my iPad right now, and it looks great. So now that we know what kind of camera we're using, let's move on to getting dressed for the audition. We kind of have some rules about that. Dressing for success. When picking out your audition outfit, it's important to stay away from certain things because for one reason or another, they won't read well on camera and worse, they'll become a distraction. So here are the do's and don'ts of on-screen audition wear. Avoid wearing black on camera, especially outfits that are all black. It'll look way too dark and lose all definition. In short, you'll look kind of shapeless. If you happen to be auditioning for a very specific character like Lydia Dietz from Beetlejuice and you really feel like you need to wear a dark color, your best bet is to forego the black clothes and stick to something that's navy blue or gray. It'll get the job done. The same thing goes for clothes that are super white with one small difference. The shirt will glow. Don't ask me why, I don't really understand it myself. It's something about the camera exposure, trying to pick out your face but grabbing the white garment instead. Just trust me on this. Instead, go for something that's yellow or light blue. You should pass on busy patterns in general for self-tapes. They're really distracting and just don't read well on camera. But one pattern stands above the rest. The biggest no-no of them all, stripes. Besides having the distinct ability of making you look wider than you actually are, thin stripes have this neat little party trick of getting on camera and strobing. Basically, they become wavy and move. No stripes. So what else is left? Solid colors, of course. Just do a quick double check and make sure that your shirt isn't the same color as the background you're recording on. You don't wanna look like a floating head. Unless of course you're auditioning to play one. Now that the don'ts are out of the way, the good news is that there are way more do's. Here are just a few. If you feel like you want to, wear a jacket or some other form-fitting layers. It adds texture to the tape and it makes it way more interesting to watch. Dress with the character that you're auditioning for in mind. Now, before you get too excited and start ordering costumes from Party City, I don't mean that you should cosplay for a self-tape and dress exactly like the character. Just take some slight inspiration. For example, if the character you're going for is a poor street urchin, don't wear your nicest clothes. Explore how you can suggest the character without copying the outfit exactly. Last, but certainly not least, Wear what makes you comfortable. The most important thing is that you feel good about your audition. One way to help that along is by wearing something that you feel confident in. 
There's nothing more fun to watch than a confident performer. One more thing. You're going to want to steer clear of clothes that have logos and lots of words on them. What might be a great conversation starter in the audition room can actually be really distracting on a self-tape, especially if the camera... You don't want the person watching your scene to spend the entirety of your tape trying to read what your shirt says. So it's best just to wear plain colors, which means that I should probably change. You still with me? Good. There. That's better. No logos, no words. It's form-fitting, but not too tight. It's not too loose. It's a color, and it's comfortable, and I feel good in it. So I think I'm almost ready to start my self-tape. But there's something wrong with this picture. What is it? It's my hair. I've gotten so many self-tapes sent back to me because my hair was covering my face. So before you start, <laughs> make sure that your face can be seen. Your face can't be seen, we can't see you act, and that's kind of important in a self-tape. You can wear your hair up or down. It really doesn't matter, just as long as we can see your face. I started keeping a list of all these parental missteps for the court. Have there been parental missteps? Uh, yeah. He force-fed me pancakes. He forced you to eat them? Well, he forced me to order them, and I ate them because I was hungry and because they were delicious. So now that my face can be seen, let's talk about makeup. If you wear it, it's really important to make sure that it's an accurate representation of who you are. You don't want to go too dark with the eyeliner or too bold with the lipstick, unless that's your own personal style or the character calls for it. If you wouldn't do it walking into the audition room, then you probably shouldn't do it in your self-tape. Remember, you're auditioning. We want to see you. <laughs>
I don't know if I see one of these for real. <sighs> now that we have location squared away, let's get you lit properly. The best way to go about that is with one of those selfie ring lights that hooks right onto your phone or your tripod. No ring light? No problem. Standing next to or facing a window at peak sunshine time is honestly my favorite way to film a self-tape. Natural light is probably the most flattering. Just don't miss your window of opportunity or the daylight will pass you by and you'll have to postpone your self-tape. No one wants that. But what if you don't have a big window? Well, then you better get comfortable with turning on all the lights and relocating lamps until you achieve optimum level of brightness. As long as you put everything back where you found it when you're done, no one should mind too much. Whether you use a ring light, window light, or lamp light, make sure you mind your angles. If you're not careful with your placement, the light could shine on you in a way that casts shadows over your face, making it hard to see you or giving the illusion of having dark circles under your eyes. But be careful. There's also such a thing as having too much light. It's called overexposure and can give you a washed out or really, really white look. When it comes to lights, honestly, I'm pretty limited in helping you because ultimately it's different for every person based on location, height, face shape, and equipment used. So, Best advice I have for you is play with what you have and find out what works best for you and your situation. In short, your ideal audition background will be quiet, clean, and bright. Once you have these three things, you're ready to jump in front of the camera. But don't start rolling just yet. We need to get you perfectly framed in the camera first. So let's talk camera position. Unless otherwise instructed, the standard crop is from the waist up, leaving only a few inches above the head. For a closer shot, you can shoot from just below the chest, but never less than that. Again, we're not trying to make you look like a floating head. Plus, I don't know anyone who only acts from the neck up. One last thing, make sure the camera is eye level. Too high and it changes the shape of your face. Too low and you get some not so flattering camera angles. And when the camera is truly at eye level, we, the audience, have a front row seat to gaze straight into the windows to your soul. Sorry I can't be there, Aurora. I'm sick. <coughs> <coughs> Jonah, you're a lab partner. I know, but my doctor told me I'm allergic to having my face melted off by a laser. Filming your audition. We did it! We made it through all the prep work and we're now ready to start filming your audition. So let's get right to it. The first rule of filming is don't look directly at the camera. This goes for singing and reading lines. You're trying to give them as close to a real performance as possible, and in actuality, you wouldn't ever be looking directly at whoever is on the other end of the camera. There are some exceptions to this rule, i.e. slating, select commercial auditions, or Ferris Bueller. But unless instructed otherwise, assume you should not be looking at the camera. So where do you look? The answer is just to the right or left of the camera. It's that simple. For songs, find a focal point on the wall and sing to that. Just remember to keep the eye level. If reading with a scene partner, they're your focal point. If they're really tall, have them sit. Again, eye level is key. Speaking of scene partners, this note is for them. Be hyper aware of your volume as you record. You shouldn't be louder than the person who is actually auditioning. The same goes for music when singing a song. We should be able to hear it, but it shouldn't overpower the person singing. When recording, leave three to five seconds of dead space before and after each scene or song that you film. But remember to stay in character. So, where are we going? 
we're going to a party on 114th. You need me to pick something up? Actually, you need a college ID to get in, so... You know I'm well over 21. You can only get in with a college ID, which you do not have. So, I'm sorry, Mrs. W. Rules are rules. You'll probably feel a little bit weird doing it, but trust me, this will come in handy later when it's time to edit. This one is more of a helpful suggestion than an actual rule. One of the most challenging things about a self-tape is trying to recreate the energy that comes from that adrenaline rush you get right before you walk into the audition room. So, to help you out with that, before you film, try doing 10 to 20 jumping jacks. You don't want to be out of breath, just do enough to get your blood flowing and spike that energy. So now you're ready to move on. Or are you? All right, friends, I'm going to talk to you for a minute. So there's a tendency with self-tapes to go through your scene and your song one time, get everything close enough and then say, all right, that's it, I'm done, submit it, and then move on to the next thing. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, there is no such thing as a one and done self tape. There are just too many factors at play. You have your lights, you have the sound quality, you have the sound volume, you have your actual material that you had to prepare. It's just not possible. So at the very least, when you're recording self-tapes, you should record one just to see that everything's going well and the levels are where you want them to be, and then record at least three more times. From that, you can take a look at all of the different takes, make different choices, weigh your options, and see if you want to do it again. You've worked so hard to get to this point. You owe it to yourself to make sure that the tape that you submit is absolutely magical and the best that you can do it. So, I'm gonna ask you again. Are you really ready to move on? Oh, good. It's time to slate. This is the easy part. Slates can vary from audition to audition, but for the most part, they're pretty straightforward. A standard slate is just you, directly addressing the camera, saying your name, your age, and how tall you are. Hi, my name is Ryan Cargill. I'm six foot tall and I'm over 18. It's that easy. But just in case you were thinking of using the same slate for every audition, think again. Hi, my name is Jazzy Williams. I'm 5'2", I'm over 18, and I live in LA. It is well within the right of casting directors to request that you slate your name, your age, your height, your state of residence, the song that you're singing, the role you're auditioning for, the scene you're reading, and more that I can't even think of right now. Lucky for us, we don't have to guess what they want to hear. If they want to know something specifically, they'll ask for it. And they're all easy questions that we already know the answers to. So don't stress yourself out about it. So now let's talk about what we expect from a slate. A slate should be a separate take from any scenes or songs you record. If you edit it into one video later, that's fine, but you should not film a slate and the audition material all in one shot. Look directly into the camera. This is the only time during the audition you can do this, so you might as well take advantage of it, right? Over-enunciate. It's very important that we understand every single word that you're saying. Casting asks for this information for a reason. Don't forget to smile. This is the time where you can show the creative team that not only are you talented, but you're also a fun person to work with. So let that personality shine through. Hi. My name is Henry Beauchamp. I am 57 and a half inches tall. I'm 11 years old and was born on April 24th, 2008, and I live in Hong Self-taping can be a little frustrating in the beginning, especially if you're a perfectionist like I am. 
It's a different format and that's gonna take some getting used to. But what I love the most about self-tapes is you can always reshoot it. So relax. If you mess up, just laugh it off and try again. You've got time. Hi, I'm Amy Griffin. I'm reading from Mandy. This is scene two. Many of them in his early childhood were associated with fever or cough and cold and, and that's, those aren't my lines. Those aren't my lines. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amy Griffin, reading from Mandy. This is scene four. Describe his seizures to me in detail. He said seizures. Hi, I'm Amy Griffin. <laughs> Amazing. You've finished recording your audition and your slate. We're almost done. It's time to review all of your many, many takes and pick the one you like the best. Once you've done that, we can talk about editing. There are two ways we can go about this. You can upload separate attachments into an email and send it off that way. Or if you're feeling fancy, Use video editing software to turn your various clips into one video. Now, don't get overwhelmed at the idea of video editing. You don't need some big expensive program to make it happen. There are tons of free programs that will more than get the job done. I personally use iMovie. But don't do too much. You don't want anyone distracted by your glorious editing skills. We want them to focus on your audition. That's the whole point. So a header with your name on it and a crossfade transition between scenes is really all you need. And no filters, please. Having these video editing tools is nice, but it isn't necessary. It's perfectly acceptable to submit separate attachments. Just make sure they're all sent in one email. We don't want casting to accidentally miss something. Regardless of how you submit your audition, just don't forget to trim off some of that video cushion or dead space we talked about earlier. Now what? Triple check your audition. Make sure it's exactly how you want it and send it off. Your job is done. That's it. That's all I have for you. You are now officially ready to go out into the place of residence and self-tape until your heart's content. Remember, when in doubt, just be yourself. Directors want to see you as you are, and no one plays a better you than you do. I hope this was helpful for you. Break a leg on that next audition. Bye! Stop calling it that. You can call it if you No. It's just a mistake that my mother made. Hi, my name is Colin Jeffrey. I'm 12 years old, and I will be singing A Million Dreams. First of all, those caskets were incredibly dope. My mom would have loved them. And second of all, did you stalk our funeral? How dare you take the hint, dude? 